Welcome back to Road to Kerbin. We're already on episode seven and I'm thinking instead of going and seeing other places, I really want to get to know Armstrong a lot better. Right, so I had a look at our missions and we've got a, a mix of missions which are, we've got an option to do a, a stable orbit of, of road and then return. But we've also got some Armstrong science ones at the moment. We've got some science from the surface of Armstrong, science from the uh, space around Armstrong. And I noticed in our strategia, we've also got this, the Armstrong project, which is the, the whole idea of this is that we've got to put a, f a flag on Armstrong. We get a penalty if we don't do it. Um, and we get a penalty if we cancel it and da, da, da. But one of the big things is it gives 400% funds to milestones gained for Armstrong. So I think we should take this, we should do those missions, we should look towards putting a flag on Armstrong before we come back and do our whole Lua mission and whatever Ash is. I don't know what Ash is, if that's another planet maybe, I don't know. Right. So I'm going to put a craft up. We'll probably send up the Exploration 2 again. We'll put a new crew member in it. And I will probably meet you in orbit of road because that will just be easier then, won't it? Right, here we are. We have Gorius Roman again. This is her first orbital flight though. She is in orbit of road now. And she's again in the Exploration 2 craft. Um, we should actually make sure that we've got our antennae out, which means pressing five because I've action grouped that, haven't I? There we go. So we know this craft works around road. I'm not sure about the antenna antennae signal around um, around Armstrong, but well, you know, we'll, uh, we'll 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 try that. So we want to go to Armstrong. So we're looking at mm, probably burning around here, which is actually quite handy because it's on the descending node. So we're going to add a maneuver there. And oh, we're getting some crew reports from orbit. How nice. That's going to be added science for us, isn't it? So we're going to pull this out and hopefully we get some sort of interaction that isn't with R. Ah, there we go. So what we can do is we can just manipulate this a little bit. Just pull it in and we just want to move our maneuver node ever so slightly this way, do we? Or this way. There we go. We've got an interaction there and there. I really want it to be near that ascending and descending node. So what we can do is we can just refine this a bit because we can see that, um, let's have a look, our close approach is 200 kilometers. That's very small, isn't it? What we could do is, can we actually reduce it a bit? Is that going to reduce it? That is reducing it, but not vast amounts. And that's making it go up. So we'll do a bit of this. Um, maybe a bit of that. There we go. Oh, there we go. We're getting nice and close now. We'll pull it back a bit. There we go. See myself. So 100, 100 kilometers. That's not bad. Um, that's going to cost us 600. We've got loads of Delta V. So it says 600 to come back as well. That's 12. So we've got about 400 to play with. So we could probably get into orbit and mess around a bit there. And we should have enough Delta V to get back home, hopefully. Um, let's hope this doesn't turn into a rescue mission. But we should be okay. We should be okay. I think. Right. Let's give that a go, I think. So we're going to fast forward to here. Pop into the view so we can see the craft. We've got uh, two minutes to go until we've got our thing. Uh, it's going to be quite a long burn, actually, isn't it? So oh, going the wrong way. It would help if we turned the right way. Do, 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 do. It's a great start if we start hitting the wrong keys, isn't it? There we go. That's a problem. Right, so we're, we're lined up roughly, and you can see we've got a bit of uh, radial burn as well as a prograde burn. We could just do prograde burn and, and save ourselves some fuel, but you know what? Let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. So we are ready. This burn's going to take 1 minute 40 seconds, so we really want to put that on either side of the marker. We're probably going to start, what, 40 seconds early before before the time um, because we want to get a little bit of it out of the way and then and drag it out the end there. So we're just going to start any minute, now, any second now, not minute now, any minute now. You can see Grace is really excited. She's much, much more excitable than our previous crew member who was, well, she looked terrified, I'm going to be honest with you, but then I suppose she was the Kerbal to go, first Kerbal to go into, uh, <laughs> into, into orbit. So... Yeah, and she did have that sort of flash at the start, which was a little concerning. I didn't realise that these engines here actually have fuel in them, which is quite cool. I quite like that. I don't think they ever used to, um, which is really nice. Um, so, yeah, that's something to remember, actually. If we're going to re-enter, we need to make sure this thing's got all the fuel in. So what you could do is just uh, increase the priority on that. 
and that, and that would mean that this does not lose all of its fuel. You see, it's not going down now. That's quite good. So we're burning along there. It's going to get that over and done with. There's a lot of interesting lighting going on there. Now, is that off the engine? That's quite cool if it is, that it's got a bit of a reflectivity going on there. Uh, so this, again, this is the waterfall um, engine plumes. It looks You can't really tell it much of it on the uh, in, in space there because it's just flying out like it is. Um, nice nice heating effect there. So this is a curb, but KSP has come quite a long way since I used to uh, play it. So what we're going to do is we're going to get near and then we're going to cut our engines because I actually want to try and get this as nice as possible. Like so. And there. Right, now we're going to go into the tracking station and I'm going to see if I've got any sort of interaction. Right. Here we go. We have something. I just don't know what it is. And there we go. It's about 100 kilometers now. We have about 100 kilometer interaction. Wonderful. Right, we're going to speedy on time there, I think. Um, which way are we going? We're going this way, are we? Yes, we're going out this way. So we're going to speedy up to about here. There we go. Do, 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 do. See, we're losing signal apart from when the space center is going to come around and give us signal. So the space center is in, currently in line of sight with Armstrong. We do not have a relay around Armstrong at all yet. So that's going to be problematic. And we actually need to make sure that we're orientating ourselves in the normal because we don't want our batteries to run out. I've just realized because Commendable 1 is actually having battery power. You see, our batteries were almost gone then. That's actually good that we caught that. Otherwise, we'd have to get out and push. Right. Let's leave that as that is and let us go a bit further towards here. So we're going to go to about there. So we're going to walk to there. And we should see our batteries are... Yeah, we're getting loads of batteries charged. No, now we're in high space and we're getting a crew report. That's brilliant. Commendable 1 is running out of uh, experimental space. Is it? That's interesting. So that must be still on there. On there. Is it running out of... That is interesting. Is it just battery power that it's running out? Is this rotating? Is it in the dark at the moment? It's actually... You know, we could actually have a look at this. Where's where's Commendable 1? Can we, can we see it? Oh, no, no, no. It's there. It's there. Now, is it because it's transmitting? Is it because it's transmitting science and it doesn't get a chance to do that all the time? I don't know. Right, we're going to warp to the sphere of influence. So, here we go. Coming into the sphere of influence, we're going to get all of that. We've got a science completed. Oh, we've conducted a low a scan of road. Oh, that's superb. So that task is done already while we were doing this. Brilliant. Right, because those are just happening in the background. That's wonderful. Right. So we're just going through here. Do, do, do. I, yes. Now this is going to be an interesting one. Do I need to, let's check this out. What's the task that we have? We've done that one. That one's underway. Data, um, science surface were not man from orbit of Armstrong. So we need to go into orbit. Right, we have to go into orbit to do that one. I would have loved a free return orbit trajectory thing, but that's not going to happen. Right, I think we're now in in the zone. So how much is it going to cost me to get into orbit of Armstrong? What's it going to cost me? Oh, that's tight. My Delta V is not brilliant for that. Um, right, I'm just going to slide in today's for science section because it's going to be a little bit of a different one. It's going to be looking at something called patch conics and, and reality or what we call end body physics. So patch conics is what you get in Kier, a Kerbal Space Program. And it basically says that we're going to just look at the gravity of one object, one one body. We're going to look at how that gravity affects us. And that's how you end up with the spheres of influence that you get in Kerbal. So you look on the screen there, we've got some little examples there. You can probably see the bottom left is very much what you sort of see when you're, you're messing around with Kerbal, when you're doing transfers to the planets, moons, things like that. You get these colored bits because you're moving in each color from one one uh, point, one one area of interaction, one sphere of influence to another. So in point two there, you know, you've got you've got some sort of maneuver going on, but you can see you have to do something there to change the route. Okay, if we didn't do something at point two, it wouldn't change its route. Um, 
on the right hand side you can actually see these these regions so the idea that region two is like earth departure and then you've got region one is the sun centered transfer and you can see the orbit and when you're in the sun centered transfer the orbit is very standard we've gone from this odd sort of curving out away from earth to all of a sudden straight away boom we're in a, a perfect s sort of circular orbit of the sun okay or elliptical orbit of the sun and then you arrive at your next target and you see there all of a sudden we go from ooh, straight into another sort of orbit so patch conics is used primarily because it, it's simpler we're looking at the interaction of our craft or an object and one body we can measure the gravities we can measure distances we can measure velocities and we can come out with some nice approximations but it's not really what you find in the real world because the real world looks a little more complex yeah this is n body and what you actually have here is the idea that all of the bodies involved n meaning you know any number of bodies are actually uh, adding something to the gravity so here you can actually see l1 l2 these are the lagrange points or however you want to pronounce it and they're points where the the gravitational pull from different uh, different bodies actually are interacting in a way that, that gives you sort of a stable point so for example in l1 there we could actually put something pretty much orbiting that point it's a pretty stable gravitational point between the earth and the sun but you wouldn't think in kerbal that you could actually put something in that space it doesn't exist because patch conics doesn't work with it in the same way you can actually see that as the as the moon goes round the earth you get this sort of there's going to be a movement a slight movement of these this gravitational pull um so the but the actual gravitational pulls and and so forth work together and against each other in different ways so you can end up with balance and you, you can actually end up with if, if you do this and you track things is on the right hand side there is the plot of an object flying past a, a planetary body and you can see you can get some really weird things now if you just look at that planetary body on its own you think why is that happening but if there is moons if there is a star involved you've got all these other gravities pulling you and for you know remember in, in our solar system the pull of gravity of the sun is, is significant it's very powerful but it's not the only thing so it might be the overriding power but there's other things going on from planets such as jupiter for example jupiter stirring up the asteroid belts and things like that because it's actually quite a large heavy mass so whilst we use patch conics in kerbal it's not really the best one ever and uh, just keep that in mind when you're actually playing kerbal when you're looking at what i'm doing that yeah there's certain things we can do because of patch conics and it can be simpler but it does mean we can't do some of the clever things like with the lagrange points and, and playing around with stable orbits and, and using odd things like that and it also impacts things like you know uh flyby and trajectory changes and and and, and things like that slingshots so yeah it has got its positives and its negatives anyway i should really get back to armstrong so uh let's get going we could do it as lightly as possible just like that, that would do it. Although I'm end up probably losing out because when I come back, um, yes, when I come back, I'm gonna have to uh, not all birth affect it. So that's gonna be a problem. Uh, oh. You know what? I want close science. Give me the close science and be damned with it. Be damned with it. I think we were tight as it was. So 16, 12, so that's a 400. I think it's gonna be tight. Even if I do that, it's not massive, right. Okay, we're gonna do this. We're going to do this. This is what we're doing. Retrograde it. However, before we do that, let's get a bit of an EVA going on. There we go. So, would you like to do me an EVA report, please? Can I do a surface sample? No, I can't. I'm gonna wait for a little bit. Armstrong looks quite good from here, doesn't it? We just speedy up this a little uh, smidgen. I can't do that while the Kerbal's outside because, you know, that's not allowed because Kerbal would fall off. So there we go. Do, do, do. Speedy up a bit, a little bit, tiny bit. Uh, it takes, why is it taking so long? All you need to do is tell me that you're actually outside the craft and everything looks wonderful. Isn't that, is that fine for you? Because it's fine for me. Yeah, yeah, we don't need a vast amount of data from you. I'm gonna get oh, four, 15, 15 signs for this, so that's not bad. Right, let's board the craft. Right, we're gonna accelerate to this point here. We're getting all of this crew report type science back. Right, and um, you know what? I'm actually just gonna, I'm just gonna go for it. I'm just gonna do this straight away. There we go. I just hope we've got enough fuel to get back to uh, our target location after this. Right, 
we want to get into orbit of Armstrong. Here we go, here we go. Just as soon as it happens, there we go. So, we've got orbit, we've gone into orbit. Right, now we need to head home uh, as soon as possible. So, where's the best way to do this? Uh, prograde from here. How much is prograde from here? I should have actually tested this. I should have done, you know, we've just, we've just done a whole for science bit about Delta V and I've not bothered to actually test anything to do with this. Right, we're coming down. Oh, we've got this. Yeah, there's, 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 there's buckets of it. In fact, you know what? Yeah, we've got loads. That's only 300 to get there. I think we're actually going to go uh, deeper. I think we're going to go deeper. Um, yeah, I think we're actually going to come to here. And then we're going to bring our, our uh, orbit down at about here. We're going to do this. Yeah, we're going to go into a, a funny little thing like that. And that will give us a really nice low. Is that not going to be too low? Uh, it's tight. We're going to need a little bit more. A little bit more. Just a little bit more. There we go. So currently we're, we're high in space high. We're going to accelerate towards that. But first of all, let's check our... I think we've got loads of it. You know what? I'm not going to worry about it. Let's get there first. And we'll get into the craft. Right, we're going to go prograde, and we're going to go retrograde, that's what we want. And we're looking at our periaps, we're going to uh, fire a little bit of engine. We're going to bring that down just a smidgen to, I don't know, five, five. Uh, uh, uh. Note to self, remove finger from control, because you remove mouse from over top of orbit because you can't actually change it if you do that. Right, we're going to pull it back upwards because we'd rather not crash into the planet. This craft might be able to land actually look at it. So let's have a look. Um, how low is that? Yeah, that we are we are skimming. We are skimming the surface right there. So we're just going to go up a little bit. I think about there. That's it. So let's do a little time warp E2 to here. And let's see what happens with, uh, are we just above? We're in space just above. So I think we can do an EVA. And can we can we get your EVA data, please? I'd really like to do an EVA report. Uh, what is the What is it doing it for? It is doing just low space. So I'm not going to get multiple of them for different biomes. Okay, I can live with that. So we're just going to uh, speedy up. This is where this is where uh, this is where Grace flies off the side of the capsule by accident, and then I lose her for for eternity, or I have to mount some sort of strange rescue mission because I decided to be impatient and speed up the actual science component because Kerbalism sometimes does my head in with things like this. Whoa! Look at that. That is cool, Grace. You are seeing so you're not even looking at it. You're actually looking just elsewhere. Oh well, um, I'm, I'm glad that you're enjoying your time with us get back in the craft right so we've got the data transferred to the craft is it actually able to send it is the next question do we have signal we have signal with uh, with road direct that's good we should actually think about putting some sort of communication system up around here um, but we need to get some better uh, transmitters receivers around road as well I am gonna have to look into Lua and figure out if that if that altitude is actually is actually geostationary or rodo stationary because if it is then uh, yeah that becomes quite an interesting one right so i think we are ready for a a return to home so is that the right position to do that burning that's the question no that is not it so i actually want to do it um let's see i want to do it about up here do i i want to go inwards um, inwards about there that's not perfectly aligned but we can live with it and then that should give me with a little bit of messing around it should bring me down to oh no not an interaction with Lua please I'd rather not have that interaction in my life although is that going to be the first there we go how far down are we 79 so I can go a little bit more and that takes us into the atmosphere right I don't really mind where we come in at, but I don't want to come in too steep. So I want to just skim to start with. So 
that's about right we're going to go for that let's get us to that node we're getting all the EVA data transferred across all that sort of stuff right here we go uh, we want prograd because that's where our marker is going to be well that's interesting yeah so have we got electricity yeah we're still getting we're getting loads of electricity now and no? we're getting trouble when we're around road i wonder whether there's uh, an odd little glitch there or something that'd be quite interesting to look into so we're going to use fire engines and we're now flying out all over the place right i want to actually zoom into um here yeah there we go right i'm focusing on acuity one i don't really want to focus on acuity one but it'll do for us so do that slow down slow our engines down i love the fact you can throttle if you if you play realism of all this is this is such a treat right keep going keep going so we want to go down to i think uh I want to say 30, which would be Kerbin, but this is lower atmosphere, so maybe 25? I definitely want to capture, I definitely want to capture. Um, so I think 25, I think we go at 25, and with the hope that 25 is okay. 25 kilometers, not 25 meters, that'd be absolutely terrifying. Right, there we go, right, 24, that's close enough. All right, we're gonna knock that off. We're gonna put ourselves back into the normal or anti-normal because we can how are we looking right we are that's definitely not the orientation that i want which is interesting actually so is there um is there an odd orientation to that i'm gonna have to look at its its actual spin at some point and see how it's spinning because is its normal a bit odd or is my orbit ah because i'm in a polar orbit the normal's to the side right okay that's actually my fault it needs to be like a radial in radial out sort of type position right so there we go we're gonna um, fast forward a bit now all the way out of here um, to here first of all let's get out of here and uh, and then we're just gonna to warp to there come on hurry up chip 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 all the way please i wish you could eat in, in the old versions of ksp used to if we were dro dropping past a boundary like this if you went at all anywhere time warpy you were you were doomed to uh to hell basically because your your whole path of your craft was going to be completely ruined right we're going to swap down to there do 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 here we go we've got nice signals showing up there isn't it so i think this here is the predicted orbit after one pass through the atmosphere because we've got this one of these mods that's like is it um landing or orbital guidance or something like that i've never used it before i need to actually look it up um and it will it will help guide you on that see there we go it's uh it's shown that for some reason the orbit is now changed back to there that's odd isn't it um so it says we're not going to hit the planet which is an odd one because i really would like to so we're going to just come to about here get into the range of the planet i hope that our atmosphere is enough to capture us because if it is not that is a problem right there's something i don't know what that is oh what's that that's the island hey <laughs> So we actually might come down near, um, near home for this one, actually, if we get this right. So let's just toddle on through. There we go. Now we're in the atmosphere and we're going to discard that extra st stage. I don't, I'd like to keep it. I'd like to get the extra cash back for it, but we don't need it. It's, it's actually more likely to risk our landing than anything else. So we're just going to get rid of it. Um, and there you go, it's doing its burning up thing. Um, we're going to turn off our stuff and uh, hopefully we're going to do all right. I think we'll get rid of the contract stuff. Um, we're just going to go in naturally. I'm going to slow it down a bit. don't need to go too, too time warpy through the, uh, the atmosphere. What our ablator is going, and we are losing speed. We're still going down, which is good. We have yet to hit. We've got a minute until our periaps. Our periaps time is going up, so we're captured. Yeah, we're going in. Right. Now it's just a matter of um, how close to the base do we get. I wish it would actually tell you the distance. That'd be really cool. Uh, what's active navigation mean? What does that mean? Oh, oh, it tells you. Oh, that's cool. ETA to the KSC in 44 seconds. Oh, 42 seconds. Right, that's cool. So does it predict how close you get now? That, is that our shadow? I think it is. I think the thing's behind us and the shadow's there. So 
That's cool. I didn't know you could do that. So whatever mod this is, which I'll have to look it up. If you know what it is, comment down below, please. I can't remember what mod it is. Whoa, we are... This is... This, now, you saw I did not plan this. This is just direct return. Direct return from Armstrong. This is just fluke. This is... And maybe road is actually that small that actually it's hard not to hit the, K, the KSC. There's our... Uh, Artful one debris from uh, from our first uh, cra crash, shall we? We not crash, not crash. You know, it was uh, test flights. That's all it was, test flights. Uh, I was going to say, what's that there? It's a cloud. So we're just coming down. I'd really like it if the parachute opened on time. So there we go. Ground is there. That's wonderful. Grace, you have done so well, my dear. Grace, you have done so well. And we're just going to pop it down. How far away are we? We're going to be five five kilometers away. You could walk. You could literally not on a tree. No, not on a tree. I thought we we're going to hit a tree again. I keep forgetting that these things can kill. Um, I must remember that. So it's going to speed it down. Oh, ETA to the KSC is in is in 157 days. Well, um, was that is that the rotation of the planet or something? I'm thinking about. I don't know. Is that, is that how slow we're going sideways now? Oh dear. We would deactivate that. So we're, we're about five kilometers away from the KSC. That's not bad. That's walkable, you know. I mean, not 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 in a space suit, maybe, but, you know, normally. So there you go. There's the KSC in the background. And we're done. So I'm going to collect all this stuff up. We're going to look at the science. And until next time, have a great one.